YouTube as well. Hey, Kiosha. Hey, Jay. How's everybody doing today? It seems like everybody's good. Everybody's up. Everybody hopped off, hop right on. Um, and so, yeah, I wanted to, before I, I'm just actually getting home, and so I'm trying to uh, get this message out. I was kind of thinking about some things, and I actually went back through one of my journals. Um, actually went back through one of my journals and found some information or found some things that I was writing about in regards to focus as it pertains to purpose. If you are not, again, if you guys could share the broadcast, good. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm winding down. I have an early morning breakfast to attend in the morning, so I better be winding down sometime soon. But um, if you guys have not shared the broadcast, please share and invite followers to join us. We're going to be talking about getting your focus back really quickly. I have about three things um, three things that I want to share in regards to getting your focus back. And I'm going to be praying for you all in regards to getting your focus back. Again, we're talking about purpose this month. This is the, um, this is the eighth month of the year. And we know that the number eight stands for new beginnings. Eight is the number of new beginnings. We know that many people have, uh, had some seasons or, Hey, Kyrie, how are you? Um, so many people have had some seasons where they, some things have ended, some things that may have needed to end have ended, thank the Lord. But now you are at a place to where you're having to start over and it may be causing you to uh, not be able to really know where to start. And a lot of times when you don't know where to start, you can't focus when you don't know where to, what to focus on. And so there was a time uh, when I had a lot of irons in the fire and I'm still kind of a still I, I'm not going to lie I'm still kind of a little bit of a workhorse I do love to work I love to create um I love to just share I love to minister I love to speak I love to serve my community I love to do a lot of different things and at some point I'd reached a this was this has been some years ago but I reached a high level of success but I still had what was an empty feeling and that empty feeling eventually God had to take me through some things, take me through losing a lot of things to show me that my focus was off. And it wasn't necessarily that I had a lack of focus. I was very focused, but I was focused on the wrong thing. I had a misplaced focus. Um, and of course, we know that our focus should always be on God. But. I think when we misplace our focus or we place our focus on people or on things or on our businesses, um, and it's nothing wrong with that. I think we should be focused. I think we should put energy into it. I think there are certain results that you get when you are consistent with things, when you put that energy into it. But if you lose the focus or if you lose the why in regards to what it is that you are doing, um, a lot of times if your focus is not first God, in whatever you do, I don't care if you're, um, you know, taking out the garbage that day. If your mind is not focused on God and what is pleasing to God, it causes you. This is what I found out. Even with a lot of success, I think I even with a lot of success with the misplaced focus, I had to work harder than I would have had to have worked if God would have been at the center of all of my decisions. I ended up having to do a lot of things by trial and error because my focus was off my focus a lot of things I did it by experimentation or I had to um, like I said it was a lot of trial and error and so I found myself um, still even with even being successful even with working hard even with obtaining materialistic things I found myself very empty and I don't know if there's anybody that has ever been at that place to where you, it's not even so much that you don't have everything that you need. Your bank account is fine. You know, a lot of times we talk about our bank accounts. We talk about a lot of materialistic things, but there is still, maybe you have those things and you still feel like you are empty. And so what I found that I was trying to do was that I was trying to solve an inward issue with an outward solution. Let's say that again. I was trying to solve an inward issue with outward solutions, meaning more materialistic things, more success in business, more titles, uh, more positions, more serving, 
Um, and a lot of times that serving, like kind of like Mary and Martha, when Martha was preparing the house and being busy moving around when Jesus was coming. But Jesus told her that her focus was off. She was trying to do things outwardly. But Mary had found the true way and Mary was sitting there at Jesus's feet listening. She had made Jesus her focus and Jesus ultimately rebuked Martha when he told her, no, 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 no. You're trying to do all these outward things to try to fix an inward thing. And Mary has found the right way. And so uh, that's what I was trying to do. And so here are three things that I want to kind of leave with you guys tonight. Thank you guys that have shared this so far. And thank you guys for the hearts. Um, maybe your focus is off because you are trying to do too much in too little time. You're trying to do too much in too little time. Now, why would you be trying to do too much in too little time? Why would you be trying to do that? A lot of times when we start over like I said we're talking about new beginnings a lot of times when we have to start over a lot of times that may mean we starting over later in life or maybe we feel like we are too far gone or people are further ahead of us and so we have to feel like we have to do all these things we have to get all this stuff done and we overwhelm ourselves and we don't pace ourselves and a lot of times what comes out of that when we are trying to get too much done in too little time is we end up contending with God before things are ready to be birthed in our life. Does anybody hear me? Are y'all listening? Because y'all is kind of quiet over there on the, on the left hand side of the screen. But we get that way and we get overwhelmed and we start to feel empty again trying to fix um, the inward problems we're having with outward solutions. We're trying to deal with uh, feeling behind or feeling like we're getting too old. So if we don't do it now, we have to try to catch up. We have to bring it, speed everything. Everything has to be warp speed. But you're trying to do too much in too little time because you're not giving God free reigns to do them in his timing. We're trying to put it in our timing. And if we're always looking at what other people are doing, where other people are, how many followers this person has, or how much money this person makes in their business, then we're going to always have this imaginary finish line in front of us that we will never cross. We will never cross because our focus is off. We have a misplaced focus. We're trying to fix the inward solution. We're trying to fix our inward insecurities of being behind and not being having as much as another person with outward things, by overworking yourself, by not getting any rest, by being cutthroat, trying to come up or competing with other people. So we're trying to do too much in too little time. That's one way you can tell if your focus is off. Uh, the second thing is we're pursuing the wrong goals, period, period, point blank. We're just pursuing the wrong goals. And it's like I said, it's it's not anything wrong with having goals, but make sure you're pursuing the right goals. Make sure you've prioritized them the right way. A lot of times I tell people all the time it's a dangerous thing to just prioritize because really all prioritization is is taking number seven on the list and moving it up to number one on the list. But it does not tell you if number seven even needs to be on your list at all. Y'all follow me? It does not tell you if number seven even needs to be on the list, period. And so you've got to make sure that you are pursuing the right goals. And the only way that you're going to know if you're pursuing the right goals is if you have consulted God, if God is your focus. That's going back to what I said all the way in the beginning. God has to be your focus. If you're going to be pursuing the right goals, then God has to be the person, the thing, the place, the whatever that you are focused on. Because another thing with pursuing the wrong goals is a lot of times we are pursuing things uh, or we are not we are not aware of what season of life we are in. And that's another way because you could be doing something very good. You could even be doing something that you're called to do and that you're very good at doing, but you're doing it in the wrong season of life. You have to know what season, when was the last time, I wonder, 
I wonder, when was the last time you really assessed what season you were in in life? When was the last time you, because a lot of times we're trying to pursue things and it's hard because we're doing it out of season. Maybe your season for that thing is up and you're still trying to get back to where you were in a previous season. But this is the thing about trying to get back to another season where you experience success. If you're trying to get back to something, that tells me that you're not growing and that you're not moving forward. So when was the last time that you assessed the season of life that you were in? Because I guarantee you when you are in place and when you are focused and when you are walking in the season and what God is doing in the season that God, that's where I want to be. I want to be moving forward in the season that God is moving in. I'm not trying to keep up with what anybody else is doing in their season or where he has somebody else. I want to be where God has for me to be, whatever season that is. And sometimes those are rough seasons. Sometimes those are hard seasons. But like I said yesterday, a lot of times we need that weight. We need to be able to lift that weight in order to increase our strength, in order to be able to increase our endurance. Because if you never increase the weight, you're going to eventually plateau off and you will not be able to lift more. So you've got to go through the seasons, even the rough ones, because when you go through those seasons, those are the seasons that God is going to prepare you for your for your future. See, sometimes we're looking at our past and we've allowed our past to define us as far as what we can have, who we can be, what we can become, what we deserve. And you've got to realize that your past does not define you. Your past, everything that happened to you in your past was only to prepare you for what God has for you, especially those rough seasons. Because they build your endurance. They build your character. Let me tell you this. A faith that has not been tested cannot be trusted. I'm going to sit that right there. A faith that has not been tested cannot be trusted. We want to go to the nations, but we won't even get in our apartment complex and witness to our next door neighbor. We want to go to the nations. We want to have these platforms, but you can't even take your, your co-worker talking about you. How are you going to go to the next level and you can't even take it on this level? Everything that's happening on this level has got you all bent out of shape. So you've got to be able to handle this level before God will take you to that level. Everybody understand what I'm saying? You've got to be able to handle this level. You, if, if you can't handle the weight on this level, how can you handle the weight on this, on this level? It sounds very elementary, but I, I just want to help y'all tonight. You've got to pursue the right goals. And the only way that you're able to pursue the right goals is if God is your focus. Because no matter what you're going through, no matter what you are going through, no matter what you're going through, as long as you are in the season that God is moving in, I guarantee you it does not matter what you're going through. You will be on target. It doesn't matter where everybody else is in front of you. Delete that imaginary finish line. Stop feeling like you have to compete. Stop feeling like you have to catch up. Stop working overtime, drinking energy drinks, trying to stay up all night, try to get a bunch of stuff done. When God is with you and when you are walking in the season that he has for you, none of that stuff is going to even matter. None of that stuff is going to even matter. You know you are walking in his will when the stuff that's behind you no longer matters when the stuff that happened in the past no longer matters so we've got to got to got to get to a place to where we are pursuing the right goals and how can we do that sometimes we're trying to do too much trying to do too much in too little time because we're contending for things outside of God's timing for our life we're pursuing the wrong goals altogether but we've got to make God the focus and so the last thing that I want to talk about is that we've never really identified what we really want. We've never identified what we really want. A lot of us are sitting there saying, well, I just want to be happy. Well, what does that mean in tangible terms? Because happiness is not necessarily a destination. I believe happiness is a byproduct. Happiness is a byproduct. Listen to me. Hear me now. Happiness is a byproduct of when you are walking in your purpose. Of when you are in line with God, happiness will come. But happiness is not some euphoric state you reach when you get a certain amount of money in the bank 
or when you get a certain handbag or when you get in a relationship. That's not happiness. Now, it can make you happy. For a meantime, you might have a little, your little moment where you feel but lasting true happiness and living in a state of happiness. And not only happiness, because this is the thing about happiness. Happiness changes when your situation changes. As long as things are going good, you can be happy. That's why I said a lot of us are trying to be happy. Oh, well, I just want to be happy. So you feel like you got to do all this stuff. But happiness will change when your situation changes. Happiness is a mood. But what you want to do is get into a place to where you are so in line with God and where he has you and what he wants you to do that you reach a state of joy. Because you can have joy and be going through all hell. All hell is breaking loose. All hell could be breaking loose and you can still have joy. Now, will you be happy? Mm -mm. That's why you want to pursue purpose. You want to keep God the focus because when you do that, when you do that, I guarantee you, things will start lining up. Um, things will start happening that you didn't even, that will just, you, you just, I don't know. You got to figure out what matters to you and you got to know why. And that's why I said you have to, you never really identify what you really want. We just talking about we want to be happy. I just want, I just want happiness peace i feel like if i get this out of my life or if i get this in my life then that's going to make me happy but no that's why you stuff and stuff and just more money or more this or more that or even more success and bigger platforms and all that stuff that don't make people happy that's why you have millionaires jumping off bridges that's why you have all these celebrities that have these huge platforms that are losing their minds because they don't know how to handle that so is that really what you want so you have to evaluate, what do I really want out of this life? What do I really want? And so that is what I want to pray for you guys tonight as far as getting your focus back. And, and it's not a, it's, it's only one place your focus needs to be. And that's when you seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. All these other things are going to be added. All these things, all this, this stuff that we want. And we will be, and when God adds it, you will be in a position to not only receive it, but you will be in a position to where you'll have the character to keep it. Because I'm telling you, your talent and gifts can get you somewhere, but your character is what's going to keep you there. And so you want to, uh, we want to pray tonight that if this, if any of these things hit home with you, if any of these things hit home with you, uh, I want to pray for your focus tonight. I want to pray that your focus, um, that you get your focus back because we've got work to do. We've got work to do. Like I said yesterday, the harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. Why are the laborers few, you ask? Because the laborers are distracted right now. The laborers are not focused. The laborers are having pity parties. The laborers are falling away. The laborers are procrastinating. That's why the laborers are few. So I want to pray tonight because there's, I mean, I don't even really cut my news on that much, but I've cut it on enough in the last month to know that we as Christians, as believers, we got plenty of work to do. Plenty of work to do. So I want to pray for y'all tonight. Um, if you have a prayer request, of course, you know, you can slide it in the comments. Um, and if you don't have the app, the Emerge Online app, uh, Emerge Online devotional app, you can also submit prayer requests through that. You can go to the App Store, the Google Play Store, and get the app there. Download it. It's a free app. And uh, we send out daily devotionals and inspirational messages, timeline graphics, all that good stuff. There's videos, music, all sorts of stuff in the app. You got to just download it and go and, and, and look through it and play around with it. But I want to pray for you guys. Dear God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the lives that are represented here on this broadcast. God, we know that all souls belong to you, God. God, we thank you so much because of your word. We thank you so much for your son, Jesus, that you have sent to save us, God. That you sent to save us, God, to act as 
uh, an intermediary, God, between you and us, God, to redeem us back to you, God. And we thank you so much for that opportunity, God. God, we thank you for the ability, God, to talk about you freely, to pray freely. God, we thank you so much for, for that opportunity, God, because we know that many people, uh, there are many people in many countries, God, that don't have this freedom. And God, we don't take it for granted, God. But God, we thank you so much for your forgiveness, God. We thank you for forgiving us of anything that we've said, done, or thought that was not pleasing in your sight, God. And God, we ask right now, God, that you help us to see ourselves, God, for where we really are in right now in life, God. Help us to see ourselves and accept it, God. Help us to not be ashamed of it, God. But help us to open up to you, God. Because we know that you are the only one who can fix us. Because you created us. You are the manufacturer, God, and you know just how we're supposed to operate, God. So whatever's wrong with us, God, we know that you can get to the bottom of it, God. But help us to open up our hearts and minds to receive correction from you, God. Help us to open up our hearts and minds to receive conviction, God. And God, not because you want us to feel bad about ourselves or, or to do this, but God, you've made such an investment into us, God, that you will not allow us to continue on in the wrong way God so thank you for showing us what the right way looks like help us to be obedient to walk in the right way God help us to be obedient to your word God thank you for your messengers God all over the world all over the internet that are giving your word that are unashamedly God sharing your word with your people so that we can know what the right way looks like, God. Help us to be obedient to what you have called us to do, God. Whatever that is, God. Whatever that territory is, God. Help us to get back focused on you, God. Remove our options, God. Help us to deal with those times when you have to strip people and things from us, God, to get us back focused on you, God. God, help us to have an attitude that says, whatever it takes, God, I will follow you. Whatever it takes, God, I will obey you, God, because we know that there are people that are dying, God, and we have a job to do. And we cannot be off focus. We cannot be distracted. We cannot be procrastinating. We cannot be fearful. God, we cannot doubt our calling. We cannot doubt our importance in the world. And God, we thank you so much, God, for restoring our focus. God, we thank you so much for restoring our joy. God, where there are people that have been despondent, God, where life has hit them hard, God, where they have fallen, God, help them to get back up. Send people, an army of intercessors around them to help them get back up and get back in the game and get back focused, God. Because we need everybody. We need everybody. And God, we thank you so much much for doing it we believe it god all these prayer requests that have been submitted god prayers for families prayers for children prayers for finances prayers for health god prayers for our mind prayers for our emotions prayers for our relationships god you have heard them all god you have heard them all and god you are a god that answers prayers god and you will hear those prayers god God, you will hear those prayers, God, that we send that, that are in line with your will. Help us to pray in line with your will, God. Help us to pray in line with your will, God. And we thank you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God, we thank you so much for your awesome power. We thank you so much for your awesome power, God. God, we thank you so much for your spirit, God, that is resting with us tonight, God. We thank you so much. And we love you, Lord. God, we thank you so much. Hallelujah.